want open borders. We want a secure border like all Americans. And, and we know what it leads to. Eduardo, who is the producer of Sound of Freedom, um, he has so much ex first-hand experience. So Eduardo, why don't you tell us about uh, the movie and what we're facing with the immigration that the president's talking about? Well, first of all, thank you so much, first of all, for your time. Uh, my name is Eduardo Verastegui. And I am very grateful to this nation for opening the door to my dreams. This nation has been such an amazing blessing in my life. God bless America. God bless Mexico and God bless Hispanic America. And let's make America and Mexico and Hispanic America great again, together, pro-life again, healthy again, and free again. I met these heroes 10 years ago in Los Angeles, California, ex-Navy SEALs, ex-CIA agents, and they travel around the world undercover rescuing children. And when they told me in details what they do in how they rescue these children, my eyes were open. And I said, I'm a filmmaker, I wanna, I wanna make a movie about this, because the first step to eradicate child trafficking is to raise awareness. Because if you don't know that this problem exists, how you can fix it? So I made a promise to God that I will dedicate my entire life to end child trafficking. Yeah. To end child trafficking. Because God's children are not for sale. Children are sacred. And I am very grateful with you, Mr. President, dear amigo, dear hermano, because of you hosting a private screening in your house, because of you endorsing Sound of Freedom. After that, Sound of Freedom became the number one independent film in box office ever in history produced by a Mexican producer. Thank you for that. Thank you for the incredible hard work you're doing. Thank you for putting the children first. And that's why it's so important is for all the media, for all Mexican Americans, Hispanic Americans, to vote for President Trump. And I know we will win for the third time. For the third time. Yes. Yes. We will win for the third time. And that's a fact. It's not an opinion. It's a fact. Because it's true. Because it's true. Look what is happening right now. Look, look what is happening right now with these evil people. Obama, Hillary, Kamala, uh, Kamala, uh, uh, Joe Biden, Sleepy Joe, all this team. There's more than 300,000 children, over 300,000 children that they came through the border, they released them, and we don't know where they are. Kamala, where are the children? Kamala, where are the children? You know, these people, Kamala and Biden, they're, they're the biggest human traffickers in the history. And everyone knows that. And that's why I'm here to give my 100% to support my dear friend, President Donald Trump. And again, we will win for the third time. God bless you. God bless you, Mr. President. Really nice. Thank you. We need to put you in the White House back again, in the beautiful White House. You're going to be in the beautiful White House again. You bring up something that people don't talk about, the press doesn't talk about. I think if it were on the other side, it would be one of the great scandals in history. It's actually 325,000 children are missing. Wow. Sex slaves, slaves, or dead. Yes. One of those four things. Slaves, sex slaves, missing or dead. And three, think of what 325,000, you know, we say it, it's a number, ba ba ba. Uh, I was talking to a reporter before, I said, 325,000. Oh, what else is now? He's going like, let's go to the next question. I'm saying to myself, can you believe it? A bad, a bad sort of a reporter, I told him he is. But think of it almost like, you know, like, let's get on with the interview. Think of what 325,000, we have religious leaders up here. Think of what 325,000, how many times can you fill a nice big stadium like a Yankee stadium with, 
with that 325,000. They're missing. I think many of them are dead. Most of them possibly are dead. Uh, it's, it's so sad. Our country is so sad. And then you wake up to the news that we've given the entire Israeli uh, game plan to the enemy. Who could imagine this? Who could imagine this? Um, I would say Israel's not too happy about that, right? But with all of this together, add it up, and I'm just so glad I bring it up, and it doesn't register. Maybe it registered better the way you said it, because, you know, you, you're such passion the way you said that. We are missing, during their regime, this stupid person, this stupid person that was the border, border, border czar. She was made the border czar. Now she said she wasn't. She was the border czar for three and a half years, and now she said no. Whether she is or not, she was in charge of the border. That's loud and clear. She never once called the Border Patrol. The Border Patrol, by the way, five days ago endorsed me, which is something they're not even really supposed to do. And in endorsing me, they gave it a full-throated endorsement. But uh, in endorsing me, they, they said how horrible she is. And it's not easy for them to say that. You know, this is the vice president of the country. They work for the country. They said the worst that they've ever seen. And you know, they're great people. They're uh, people that want to do their job. It's easier not to do the job, probably. Just let the people walk right into our country. They want to do the job. They love the country. They're incredible people. I've gotten to know them very well. And they said not one time, the question was asked by the fake news, how many times did she call? Not one call was ever made to any of them by either Biden or Kamala. Not one call about the border. And I actually think it's the biggest thing. You know, we talk about the economy and we talk about inflation. Let's put them together, put them together. But there's something about that border that's just really, really evil. The drugs, the human trafficking, you know, it's not just people pouring. Through. It's the human trafficking, and they traffic in women mostly. It's mostly women, believe it or not, as much as we talk about the 325,000. But women still have the big edge. Uh, they traffic in women and children, and they do it at levels that, by the way, four years ago, it, it's always bad. If you do one person, it's bad. But this is 15 or 16 times the number. Nobody checks. Nobody does anything. You know how you check? You go and open the trunk of a car. That's how they, yeah. they put them mostly in trunks of cars. How would you like to be a woman, a little girl, a little boy, mm. in the trunk of a car? That's how they find them. A lot of times they're dead because of the heat. They drive through. By the time they get to the destination, they open the trunk and they're dead. And this horrible, incompetent person has allowed this to happen. And never one time called anybody from the Border Patrol. They work for her, and they work for him. And then they complain about a bill. It's a phony deal. It's a scam. There's no bill. I never had a bill. All you have to do as president, wake him up and say, Joe, we need you to say, close the border. That's what I did. I, That's right. I just said, we're closing the border. He keeps talking about, they keep bringing up a phony bill. The bill, the bill was horrible. Two million people are allowed in. It was a horrible bill, stupid bill. But has nothing to do. As president, you have tremendous, it's called extreme power. You have extreme power. You can, just with, by the fact, you say, close the border, and the border's closed. That's it. Very, very simple. You don't need all of this nonsense that they talk about.